The Art of Ellis. I love Dr. Ellis's artwork as well as his writings. The Art of Ellis always brings me into a place that causes me to think deeper than I ever have before and to rethink what I think I know, what I think I should know and go after as far as knowledge. It's an awakening that I have loved every moment of the process of going through the art of Ellis. The artwork that Dr. Ellis did for me shows like a window to my soul, bright light. And then around that light in my, my soul, you see those things that for me could confine, could restrict the thinking, the praxis, the way of being as a human being. But then around that is the brightness. And there's even a way to that brightness. And you see the brightness coming to the soul. The art of Ellis. I love the brush strokes, the different ways that he will show and give you an experience of who he is as a theologian. The strokes could be inward, but then you always have a way of escape. That's how I see his artwork. He shows you even through his photos, the beautiful sky and the, and the way that things come and go regardless of how we be in space and time. It's very freeing. And when the brush strokes, I've noticed when they're very inward and he's using all the different colors, he may put a ladder in there so that you can take a step higher in your thinking and your way of being, your way of escape. I simply call it the art of Ellis. no small task to try to speak to the quality, the character, the themes, the composition of the art in question here. One thing that comes to mind is that there is a striking sense of movement in all of these pieces, whether it's uh, shifting from shape to shape, from color to color, or a kind of leaning of structure, these kind of portals and gateways of, you know, overpasses to the beach, ladders, chutes, sometimes they seem like slides. 
And there's also a sense that even the subjects in the thing are, are, are leaning and moving, whether the palm trees sort of bent akimbo, or the biker or the runner, or even the sky. And there's a sense that there's a snapshot in a moment that if the artist were to have waited a minute for the photograph, or if they had painted the work at a, another day, then there would have been a different movement. And so these movements are sort of unique. There's a deep sense of dwelling in them, but dwelling in that movement, dwelling in that journey. Quote, traveling Jewish. Which interesting to note, these paintings and largely photographs didn't start until dad had moved to Florida and had stopped traveling more or less, all the, with a few exceptions. And so there's a kind of rootedness in the idea of sojourn and journey that I feel runs throughout these pieces. An intrinsic element in Mark Ellis's thinking about Jewish identity and history is his use of images. Star of David helicopter gunships, Constantinian Judaism, Jewish civil war, interfaith ecumenical dealers, the new diaspora. These images not only challenge religious sensibilities, they function in the way Abraham Joshua Heschel describes the prophet's imagination. Quote, the prophet is an iconoclast, challenging the apparently holy, revered, and awesome. A prophet is an assaulter of the mind. Often the prophet's words begin to burn where conscience ends. The prophet does more then translate reality into a poetic key. The images must not shine, they must burn." End of quote. Professor Ellis's images carry an intensity. To me, it is the intensity of the prophet. Indeed, intensity is his primary engagement with the world. His images have taken on new forms in recent years. They now come in stunning photographs, videos, and paintings. These forms are more difficult to comprehend than the written or spoken words. 
looking at these works of art in front of us is an exercise in prophetic imagination. Can we listen to the prophetic words conveyed in the dark beauty of dawn turning into a gorgeous sunrise? Or to floating ladders stretched in a sea of lavender acrylics? They challenge our religious imagination. They summon us to see beyond the text. Hello, everybody, and thank you for this opportunity to speak about my dad's paintings. Uh, I think a lot about his tendency to abstraction, which, of course, evokes the modernist painters that I know he likes. Uh, of course, you can see that at least one of the paintings pretty directly references Russian modernist Vasily Kandinsky's 1913 color study, Squares with Concentric Circles, which gets me thinking about what we often think of as the spiritual in art to use Kandinsky's phrase, that spirit is often thought to manifest itself as a certain kind of confidence in the relationship between artistic form and social change. In my father's canvases, I often detect a brooding sensibility, not at all confident in that way that, I, that we might mean when we think of the spiritual in art. If this is a kind of modernism, then it is the kind that dwells in life's fragmentation in the pall of impasse and impossibility. We see these same mournful shapes and textures in his theology as well, especially recently. So what do we make of a 21st century Jewish theology enacted in painting that bears these mournful contours? Does form have a function? Do our isms or our commitments gain or lose power when they crystallize in form? Does form turn outward, or ultimately does it turn inward? Those are some, some thoughts that I think as I find myself surrounded by his paintings. Uh, thank you so much, and uh, hope you enjoy the work.
Thank you.